Hey guys, today is my last day here in Tokyo. I am frantically packing. We have to head to the airport soon and we did a lot of shopping. So I have to do a haul for you later. But for now, I'm trying to get my suitcase and everything, all my luggage together. And I just wanted to share with you some of the transitional pieces that I brought with me. This video is very generously sponsored by Quince. Quince offers affordable luxury products by choosing quality premium materials that stand the test of time. They keep prices low by offering a factory direct model, and they also offer free shipping on all orders and 365 days to return. They just launched their spring capsule, so click the link in my description box to shop now before their most popular pieces are gone. If you've been following me on my Instagram, I was posting Instagram stories all throughout my trip here. We were sightseeing, touring, shopping, and almost my entire wardrobe was full of quince pieces. I love that they are 100% made with all natural fibers. A lot of the pieces are either 100% genuine leather, like this woven leather clutch. This is a clutch or it can be a shoulder bag. So this is what I would use when we were going out. Like when we checked into Bulgari Hotel, we had lunch at this very fancy Italian restaurant. So I just dropped all my luggage and I switched into this little clutch here. I had to tie a knot at the top, but it worked out really well. It's very casual or you can dress it up if you tuck the shoulder strap in there. So here is the clutch. To save space, I stored my Hermes belt in here. And then the clutch also comes with a very nice dust bag. I love to save these dust bags and use them as almost like packing cubes, or you can use them as shoe bags. Kind of stuff that in there to retain the shape. So here are most of the pieces. Again, I was coming from Manila and it was averaging like 90 degrees over there. It was very warm, very hot. But then here in Tokyo, it got very cold. So. I had to bring pieces that could transition from different seasons and can be easily layered. So this piece is also from Quince. This is a square neck bodysuit. This was great when I was in the Philippines and then I was layering it while I was here. I got this in a size medium just so I had a little more room up top, but it's very soft, very comfortable. That's the material, nylon and spandex. Snaps at the crotch. This was such a lifesaver. This is the oversized boyfriend cardigan. Again, I didn't realize how cold it was, so I was very cold. Most people here had coats, like win full on winter coats. And luckily I just was able to layer and I just threw this oversized cardigan. So if you look at my pictures, most of the time I am wearing this over whatever I was wearing. This is, I think this is called the European linen shirt in white. I love this. I got this in a medium just because I really wanted the oversized look to layer. Again, I also wore this in the Philippines when it was very hot and then it would be really cold inside. It's just a nice classic white button down, very easy to pair with so many other pieces. And then the Quince linen pants were the stars of the show. I got mine in a size small. So these are two different types of pants. I believe this is called the European ankle pant. Everything I talk about, by the way, will be linked in the description below. So it's just very durable, long lasting classic pieces that you can bring with you everywhere. It is a little tapered at the ankle, so it's perfect because then it doesn't touch the ground. <laughs> this is supposed to be a cropped length, I believe, like ankle length, but because I'm very short, it actually is the perfect full length pants for me. And I love the pockets. It's like the drop style pocket rather than, you know, pockets that go from the side. Very comfortable, stretchy little waistband for a nice fitted look. So I have this in the linen, like ivory color. And then these linen pants are more traditional style. And this, I am pretty sure this is also cropped, but again, I'm very short. This I also got in the size small. And these I ended up wearing multiple, multiple times, as you can see, but they just came in so handy. I just tucked in my top or my bodysuit, threw on my Hermes belt and then the linen shirt over it. And then this one, I just was not checking the weather. <laughs> I brought linen shorts. I wore these in the Philippines because it was very warm. But again, here it was like averaging 50, 55. Everyone was bundled up. I did not wear these here. But these are very comfortable if you're in a warm tropical climate. And then you can, again, either I would pair it with the linen shirt or more likely here in Japan, I paired it with the cardigan. But these are all the pieces I brought with me on these very pretty Bulgari hangers here at the Bulgari Hotel. I have to finish and pack and then I will share with you my luxury shopping haul. Hey guys, I am back here in the States, finally. I had such an incredible time in Tokyo. We were sightseeing, touring, shopping, eating. 
but I am finally back home. And this top was waiting for me when I got home. This is also from Quince. This is their cotton gauze shirt. And this is in the shade Toasted Coconut, which I think is so pretty. It's like this really warm, caramely brown. And it's a little slightly more opaque, a little thicker than the linen, but I really like this color and I am excited to wear this this summer. Now, I've already posted a couple videos from Tokyo, one sharing all my beauty, skincare, hair care, travel essentials. And then I also posted my huge luxury shopping haul, like items that I got direct from the you know luxury retail stores. But I finally wanted to talk about all the vintage luxury resellers that Tokyo is famous for and unbox for you the incredible vintage luxury bag that I got. It was such an incredible deal. I was so excited when I just kind of stumbled upon it. So when we were doing our like vintage shopping, I was going through just the Shinjuku area. There are other cities, other like districts or wards that are maybe known for luxury shopping, but we were in Shinjuku and there really wasn't a particular store I was looking for. I was really just kind of walking around and seeing what caught my eye, which windows, and which stores I thought looked interesting. So I took some notes and I have some pictures here for you. But the first store I came across is called Comeo. And this was one of the larger ones that I went to because it was separated by, they had a separate men's store and then a women's store. And then I think they had another one for just like luxury watches and jewelry. Overall, I thought Comeo had a huge like inventory. They had a lot of options and it was very beautifully displayed in a way that wasn't super overwhelming because for some stores, one in particular that I'll get into, it can be just exhausting to kind of sift through all the different kinds of bags. But Kamea was very organized and everything was very clearly labeled. But at the same time, I thought it was completely overpriced. And then there were some stores like Sakin was a, just a little hole in the wall store that I just kind of stumbled across. I think I saw a couple bags in their windows, but I ended up getting a piece of jewelry and it was such a great value. I will be unboxing that in a separate jewelry video, but all these smaller stores you really need to look out for because the inventory really is hit or miss with some of these smaller shops because maybe they're overlooked by the more well-known shops like Amore Vintage is another very popular Japanese Tokyo reseller. I actually didn't go to that one. Another like bigger reseller store was, I think it's called Daiko Kuya. I never even made it to that store because I ended up shopping at other places, but those two, Amore and Daiko Kuya, I think are maybe more well-known. And then one of the more well-known shops is called Don Quixote. That one is really more well-known for souvenir shopping and just like trinkets and Japanese candy and, you know, beauty. But in some of the larger locations, like the one I went to in Shinjuku, the top floor is all luxury goods, luxury bags. They had Louis Vuitton, like glass cases just packed with all the old style LV collections. They had Gucci bags, they had YSL. They also had a lot of jewelry and they even had two Rolex watches. I didn't see the Rolex watches, but they did have a sign that they had some available. And so when I asked, she said they had two. But in general, Don Quixote is just a huge sensory overload, especially the first few floors because it's just packed to the brim with candy, toys, souvenirs, loud music. It's just completely overwhelming. Once you get to the luxury goods floor, it's not as crazy, but again, even the luxury goods, like all the shelves, it's just crammed, crammed with goods in a way that is not as pretty <laughs> as these other resellers. But you know, that's just their vibe. It's almost like streetwear. A lot of the signs are like graffiti inspired. So I didn't buy anything from there, but I did get a lot of footage. I don't know if I'll be able to fit it all in here, but if you check out my TikTok, I posted a lot of like all the footage from Don Quixote. And then the one store that was a pleasant surprise for me is called Watch Nian. I think it's called Watch Nian. It was just so beautifully arranged. Everything looked so nice. I love the window displays. That was what drew me in. I just was walking by and I was like, oh, we were walking past it and I just doubled back and I had to go in. I started looking at their jewelry and I was trying on some of the jewelry and then I just happened to like look behind me and there was a bag that had been on my kind of wish list on my radar for a long time in terms of vintage handbags that if I ever saw it, I would, you know, look into it. It wasn't something that I was just hell bent on getting. It was kind of, you know, just laying low, but it was always in the back of my mind. And so when I saw it, I was like, oh my gosh, this is meant to be. Let me take a look. It is in 
immaculate condition and the price is incredible. And here it is. It is the Fendi Mama Zuka baguette in the original brown and black Zuka prints. Okay, let me show you how much I love this bag. I love this bag so much that I bought it brand new in 2007. Okay, I wrote the prices down because you will be shocked. <laughs> How much this used to be. I bought this in December 2007 from the Fendi boutique in Caesars, Las Vegas. This bag retailed for $590, brand new. And this is the bag that I bought brand new from the boutique back in 2007, 590. So with tax, I paid $635. And I, as much as I love this bag, I used it so much. I, I kind of regretted getting the black and not the original Zuka. I just knew that I would wear black more and you know, whatever, but I always wanted this. <laughs> And then a few years ago, I think this was actually during the pandemic, like peak, peak COVID, I was on a huge vintage kick and I saw this and I was like, oh my gosh, I actually love this bag. I'm going to get it in denim. So I got the same Fendi Mama baguette, but in the denim material, like denim fabric with the lizard, like blue lizard and old gold hardware. That's how much I love this bag. I just love the shape. I love that it has a wide bottom but it's tapered at the top. It's very easy and comfortable to wear on your shoulder. I love this. I wore it so much in black. I wore this a lot as soon as I got it. And I was always on the hunt for it in the original Zuka print, but the pricing for this is so crazy. Like I've seen this all over the place in terms of pricing. I think right now I just checked and it actually is more reasonable. I think it could be from around like eight, 900 to upwards of 15 or 1600. It's a lot, that's a lot. It's double, it could be triple as much as I paid for the original back in 2007. So when I saw this at the Wachnian, you know, reseller in Tokyo, I snatched it up because it was priced at 90,000 Japanese yen, which I was charged $599. So for less than 600, I got this amazing condition Fendi Mama baguette in the original brown Zuka. And it, again, it is in, like amazing condition. By the way, when you buy vintage like luxury bags, they have like, I forget if it's letter, like ABC quality or like A is excellent or near perfect. I forget the categories, but that's how they grade their bags. And this was definitely an excellent condition. I think it shows a little bit of wear at the top and the corners, especially right there, maybe when the flap is kind of rubbing around it, but the bottom is perfect. Like it's not worn at all. A lot of times with these canvas fabric bags, it'll have some wear on the corners, but this is an excellent condition. The Fendi like metal buckle hardware on the front, it has a little bit of scratches, but it is in great condition. The leather is a little bit worn off on the flap, but I just love this Fendi bag and I'm so excited to add this to my collection of my existing <laughs> Fendi mama baguettes. Obviously I love this style. I just think it's such a practical style. You get the look of the Fendi baguette, you get the Fendi buckle, but it's a bigger bag without like taking up too much visual space because again, it's tapered at the top. It just holds so much, but it doesn't look like a huge bag. I love this. So this is my new to me Fendi vintage mama baguette that I got from just the one day shopping. Again, there are countless stores you can go to, different areas, different cities. I think Osaka also has, you know, some famous resellers maybe. We only stayed in Tokyo. You can definitely spend weeks, months pouring through all the different luxury vintage stores in Tokyo, but I was so happy to have found this little gem just from my one afternoon shopping in Shinjuku. I hope you guys enjoyed my luxury vintage unboxing from Tokyo. I definitely plan on returning. So if you have been to Tokyo, if you have shopped there before, let me know what are your favorite stores that you would recommend shopping, especially for like luxury vintage handbags, because there are so many different resellers you could go to. It is overwhelming, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in my next one. Bye.